لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك وأتم الحج والعمرة لله and complete the Hajj and Umrah for Allah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Daily reminder, this is your brother Ali Jamar. Continuing on with our discussion of what to do after you have completed the rites of Umrah and you're still on the Umrah trip. You have about seven days, about a week or two weeks. So what are some good things that we can do to gain a lot of benefit from this trip? My second recommendation is to make a lot of tawaf. Tawaf is an exclusive act of worship. It's only done in one place in the world, and that is around the Kaaba, around the Kaaba in the Haram in Mecca. And Tawaf is a, an expression. It's it's a really beautiful representation of many things. It represents the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How it is only one place in the world where Tawaf happens, and how everybody in the world faces one direction, the Kaaba, when they are praying, and how it doesn't matter where you are coming from or what you know status you are how, how knowledgeable you are how ignorant you may be how rich you are how poor you may be it doesn't matter when you come to the haram there's only one way to make tawaf and you join you know your the tawaf ranks and you make your tawaf it's a very beautiful expression of equality it's a very beautiful expression of the tawheed of the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is really really uh, an incredible act of worship the Prophet ﷺ said, "Man tawafa bil baiti sabaa," giving us incentive. Said the one who makes tawaf around the Kaaba seven times, seven circuits around the Kaaba, wa salla rakaatayn and prays two rakahs after this upon completion. Kana kaid qiraqaba. It's the reward of this, the divine reward that we get from Allah subhanahu wa taala, is as if the person has freed a slave. It's as if the person has. Freed a slave. What is freeing a slave? Freeing a slave, it's like giving forty thousand dollars in charity. It's like donating forty thousand dollars. That's the equivalent modern day of freeing a slave. The reward is so immense because it is such a rare opportunity. It is so rare. So tawaf is a beautiful action, and when you're on your trip, I encourage you to make as much tawaf as possible. Count the seven circuits and pray two rakahs. Count the seven circuits again and make pray two rakahs. And this is something that you can do. A few things about tawaf, a few notes. <clears throat> Number one, you should have wudu when you're making tawaf. If you lose your wudu in the middle of tawaf, you can go and make your wudu, come back and join and pick up from where you left off. So I'm making tawaf, I made three circuits and I lost my wudu. So go, I, I've completed three circuits, I'm in my fourth. I go and make my wudu, come back, I start my fourth circuit again, and continue on. So, oh, just a few pointers about tawaf. Also, there's no, nothing specific that's said in tawaf. You can remember Allah, you can read Quran, you can make dua, you can do whatever you want basically. Just don't talk on the cell phone, don't interrupt other people, don't bump people, don't elbow people, you know, just be nice. And the best thing in fact to do in tawaf is to make a lot of dua. And we'll talk about dua inshallah in the next video. Jazakumullah khairan for watching so far. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.